All right, a very good morning to everybody. You are so very welcome. We are glad that you're back with Beacon Encourage in this new year 2021. We last met with you like this in the year 2020, and uh, we thank God that we are back. We've been on a little uh, break through the early part of the year when we get to do our fasting and time of consecration and all of that. But we are back to the ground grind, and we know that it's going to be a blessing. I want to encourage, if you are watching us for the first time, it will be very great if you can subscribe and take a moment to touch the notification button. This is going to help you uh, be a part of our blessed uh, cyber family. And what a joy that will be uh, to see you connecting with the rest of us. Uh, today, I'm very, very honored to have a special guest opening the year for us. Uh, I know that she's going to bless you, bless your socks off your feet, your shoes off your feet. She's a dear, dear woman of God, a darling friend of mine, absolutely known to her family for the last many years. And I'm so delighted to have Pastor Nelly Shani with us today. Pastor Nelly, you're welcome. Thank you very much. Wonderful. Yes, it's wonderful to be here. Wonderful. Yes. Good, good. So a little bit about yourself. I know that uh, you are founder and leader at the Breaking Barriers International Ministry. I know a little bit about your family and your very big grown children that are close friends and dear friends of mine. Yes. Your grandchildren, I mean, your shoes are really, really big. Yes. Uh, but tell us a little bit about yourself that probably some of our viewers that know you may not necessarily know about you. Um, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Desire. It's a wonderful uh, pleasure for me to be here today, and I find it a great honor. Wonderful. Thank you for thinking of me and for inviting me. Our greatest pleasure to have you. Thank you. Thank you. You've said a little bit about me. There are some things that people do not know about me. People yes. do not know that I'm a graphics designer. Oh, wow. Yes. That is what I studied <laughs> in university. Some people oh, say, wow. what? You're now a pastor? Yes, that is where it started. But um, I've been married for 38 years wow. next month. Well done. So I am a young old person. Oh, wow. Yes. And like you said, I've got uh, two wonderful grandchildren that are joy to us. Mm. The Bible tells us that we are blessed when we see our children's children. Yes. So I'm uh, excited to be here and Amen. to see what the Lord is going to do and wonderful. for his people today. Walking in the blessing. Yes. Amen. Married 38 years. Yes. I mean, 38 years for many people is a full lifetime. It's a full lifetime. Yeah, and some people are not even 38 oh, years yes. old. Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> Wonderful. Yes. Great. Uh, let's talk a little bit about your ministry journey. Mm -hmm. I know you've been ministering for many years yes. in many countries. Mm -hmm. I mean, your ministry profile is really, really big. Mm -hmm. And uh, some of us are privileged to hear you a little bit in the pulpit and in the different platforms you minister. Mm -hmm. How did Pastor Nelly become Pastor Nelly? And how did God call you? And how has all this transformed to what it is today? You know what? Um, the ministry started with myself. Okay. The roots were really in a need in myself. Okay. I was a believer, spirit-filled. Uh, people thought I was very, very happy. Okay. And I was to some extent, but mm. I had a problem. Mm. And this is a problem that uh, no matter how much I prayed, no matter how much I fasted, mm. you know, the Bible t tells me that I should walk in victory and yes. I looked around me and everybody else looked like they're walking in victory. Yes. But I realized that there was an area in my life mm. and that was uh, the area of anger. Mm. I had this anger that um, I just could not control. It was not obvious. Mm. Some people called me a very sweet person, but mm -hmm. they always said when I was in high school, but don't, don't get on the wrong side yes. of her. And so I would, you'll, show, you'll see her true colors. You'll see her true colors. And uh, I was born again. I was going to Christian Union. Uh -huh. But then once in a while, somebody would say something. And it would add such feeling. Almost like it's physical. Yes. Something would be moving up. It's, mm. it's anger. Mm. Then I would explode and say certain things. Mm. And then I would regret it later. Then it's almost like then it started to subside. And I would mm. ask other believers, is there something something in your life that you can't control? Mm -hmm. I said, no. And I said, for sure, I'm not normal. For uh, sure, I'm not normal. Mm -hmm. But the main thing is that it was an oppressive thing for me. Yes. And I started asking myself, how many other believers mm. are oppressed because of something that they cannot control? Yes. Um, my background is that my mother mm -hmm. was into witchcraft. Okay. From a very, very young age, we would see her. You know, she said it, that she had spirits that were from her grand, from her father. Okay. We didn't understand it. And as a young child, I would see my mother, you know, uh, 
shaking gourds and yes. stuff like that and mm. I did not know what it was. Mm. So I realized that I started learning about spiritual warfare or the mm. fact that there was another spiritual realm, another yes. world mm. from a very young age. By the yes. time I was nine years old, mm. I knew that there was another world that I didn't understand. Yes. God is so gracious because he took away our mother for eight years. Wow. For eight years, one time she just disappeared from home Okay. And we did not know where she was. Mm -hmm. And for the next eight years, we did not know where our mother was. Wow. During that time, all of us got saved. Wow. Because I know that if she had stayed... It would have been so hard. It would have been hard and some of us would have turned out as, as witch doctors mm. ourselves. Mm. And so uh, the ministry grew out of, of a personal walk. Because I started seeking for this, for God from a very early age. I mm. wondered... God, what, what is this? Mm. What is this realm that I do not know about? Mm. And God started to teach me about that realm. Oh. When I got older, mm -hmm. I still had the anger. Yes. You don't know what to do about it. Mm -hmm. But I read a book by Dr. Rebecca Brown. Okay. She's the late now, Dr. Yes. Rebecca Brown. Mm. He came to set the captives, captives free. free. Yes. And as I read that book, finally I saw what I was going through that other believers were not going through. Yes. And... Uh, I realized that I needed to pray mm. and I needed to deal with this anger mm. not as an emotion mm. but as a spirit yes and so I dealt with the anger according to what I read in the book mm. and that was it mm. so at that particular time a lot of people were running around uh, looking for deliverance mm. and I go like this because I didn't believe in it yes so they're looking for deliverance and they were running around and saying Oh, Christians need deliverance and I said nope they don't mm -hmm. I said I am born again spirit filled if there was mm -hmm. anything mm -hmm. that is out there mm -hmm. but now I should have known about it mm -hmm. yes. if, if I don't know about it then it's not real mm -hmm. but you know what um, uh, Pastor D yes. the Lord called me mm -hmm. and told me my daughter mm -hmm. I want to teach you about deliverance you believe that what you're seeing is wrong mm. for and you believe it is a counterfeit mm. for every counterfeit there is an original yes in mm. fact the reason why you're calling it a counterfeit mm. is because there is an original that's true and that is when my journey started mm -hmm. that was in 1982 wow and a lot of people who are watching were not born then i was a few years old <laughs> <laughs> As a few little and, years and, old. And, yes. And it's a bit yes. child. <laughs> yes. And so in 1982, I just became voracious. I wanted mm. knowledge. I wanted, mm. I said, any book mm. on spiritual warfare, I read it. Yes. I looked for it. Mm. Then the Lord told me, I want to teach you mm -hmm. about spiritual, about spiritual warfare and deliverance so that you can teach the body of Christ. Wow. And that is where the journey started. I started learning and mm. then now. Uh, we moved uh, to different countries yes. with my husband because mm. he worked for World Vision International. Mm. And so we moved to Zambia. Mm. And when we were in Zambia, there was a lot of witchcraft in Zambia. Mm. Almost everybody had gone to see a witch doctor. I was mm. saying, what is this? Mm. Then I realized that God was allowing me to be in Zambia. We were mm. there for three years mm -hmm. because he was wanting to teach me a certain side of warfare of spiritual mm. warfare mm. so i started a bible study okay and i started teaching wow. i just taught whoever came mm -hmm. and i started realizing is this in your house this was in my house wow. this was mm -hmm. in my house mm -hmm. so i realized that um people were having problems that no one was able to address mm. people started telling me about uh, the problems in their families they see that there is an unemployment in their family mm. and they're not the only one most of them are very educated mm. but it just seems like there's a pattern mm. and i started seeing patterns in people's lives mm. and then that is at the moment at which god started teaching me about generational issues yes that there is something that can move from my great grandparents mm. and come down mm. and touch me that's true that is when i i i first read one of our foundational verses that mm -hmm. I used to teach, mm -hmm. which is Exodus chapter 20 and verses 3 to 5. Mm -hmm. And that is where God was warning the Israelites mm -hmm. and told them um, that you should not worship another God. Yes. If you do worship another God, um, there's going to be punishment on mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. up to the third and fourth generation. Mm -hmm. So I said, then that means that I could be having a problem mm -hmm. that I'm trying to solve on my own, mm -hmm. but it did not originate with me. Mm -hmm. It is because of something that my great-grandfather did mm. or something that my grandmother did 
or something that my father did. But the main thing was that they were they were involved in worshiping another god. Yes. That touched a lot on me mm -hmm. because my mother worshipped another god. Yes. And because of that, I started seeing certain patterns in my own family mm. amongst my sisters. Because we are in our family, we are seven girls yes. and one boy. Mm. And it's like all the seven girls, there was there was something that was touching us in mm. the same way mm. in each one of our lives. So that is really how the ministry started. Because um, God, I saw that there was a need in the church. Mm. I said, you know, you look at a church and people are sitting there and they look okay. Mm. They look okay, but they are, they are struggles. Their struggles, there are things that they, that they are experiencing that they do not mm. know what to do. Mm. So that is where it really started. Wow. And then, um, so I when we moved to the, finally to the United States, mm. I had a lot of time in my hands. Yes. The other, because when you were in Zambia, I was working. Mm -hmm. From Zambia, we moved to Mauritania in the Sahara okay. Desert. Mm -hmm. And be, I became an art teacher okay. in the American Embassy School there. Okay. And so I was busy. And when we moved to Senegal, so you're not only a graphic designer, you're also an I was, artist. I was also, I'm also an artist. I'm <laughs> uh, also an artist. Then uh -huh. I studied art when I was in Form Six. Wow. Mm. And so when we moved to Senegal, mm. that is when the ministry really started to pick up. Because yes. now people would come to me regularly mm. Mm. for prayer. And I'm sure Senegal, you saw oh, witchcraft, yes. West African style. Oh yes, I saw it West <laughs> African style. Oh man, wow. God just threw me into the deep end. Yes. Yes. I'm glad you. I want to ask you about. Mm -hmm you know, the, the heart and the thrust of your ministry at Breaking mm -hmm. Barriers. But mm -hmm. before we go there, mm -hmm. I'm glad you've talked a little bit about your family and your siblings. Mm -hmm. I'd like to know, you said seven girls and one boy. Mm -hmm. What's been the impact of the ministry and knowing the Lord upon your siblings? Do all of them know the Lord now? Uh, did you lose any in some way? Mm -hmm. And then your mother, eight years away, did mm -hmm. you, when she came back, mm -hmm. how did that play out? Okay. Yes, a lot of people are, 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 are very fascinated by just that story because mm. it's not a normal story mm. of my mother because she was away for eight years during that time my father actually looked for her with the police wow. and she was just nowhere in kenya she left when i was in, in form two mm -hmm. and came back when i was in university wow in fact i was in third year university wow. when she came back so that whole time that was like a perfect stranger exactly mm. so she came back like a perfect stranger I remember the day my father came to visit me in university mm -hmm. and you know fathers don't visit in university mm -hmm. <laughs> so when i had my door knock uh, and i opened it and it's my father i knew for sure somebody has died uh, yeah mm. Th this is out of the question so she he came in and said we have found your mother wow we have found your mother so in this case it was a resurrection it was a resurrection <laughs> it was a resurrection sunday exactly oh, uh, and uh, so when she came back she was still not born again. Mm. She was still um, practicing her traditional medicine. Yes. And when she came back, she actually built a hut, mm. a small hut in the compound. A, an altar, a shrine. Her shrine. No, let me move back a bit. Okay. While she was away, because when she left, my father was not born again. And I remember the night that my father got born again. Mm -hmm. During the day, my sisters, because now my sisters were all born again. Mm. They were older and they're the ones who would pray with us in the evening. But this particular evening, my two older sisters were back from boarding school okay and they were in the garage and they were they prayed all day mm. and uh, my younger sisters and i we just found it so amusing we'd go and listen and we'd mm -hmm. hear a language that was really funny uh -huh. and we just <laughs> ran away laughing uh -huh. but that was the turning point for my dad because mm. when he came back in the evening that night i heard them in my dad's bedroom they were talking and mm. talking and talking then eventually my they came out and my dad Tears were running down his face. Wow. He had just accepted Christ. Wow. But the main thing is that he had a bottle in his hand. Mm -hmm. That was the night he was going to commit suicide. Oh, wow. Yes, he had rat poison. What a miracle. Yes, that was a miracle. Wow. And uh, uh, he's now the late. He died mm. in 97. Wow. Bless the Lord. Yes, amen. That's a full life. A full life. Three years shy of a century. Of a century. <laughs> and one thing my father kept saying mm. was that God told me three things when I got saved. Mm. Number one, he told me, guard your salvation. Mm. Number two, he said, um, um, do not remarry. Uh -huh. wow. And number three, he said, I will bring back your wife. Wow. So when God told him that, he probably thought, oh, she's coming back next week. Because mm. by that time she had been away maybe a year. Mm. Maybe she's coming back next month. Mm. There was still seven years to go. Wow. Of trusting God mm. and waiting on God. Mm. And sure enough, God brought her back. 
eventually people would tell my dad, oh, we saw your, your wife somewhere, it would be false alarm. He would travel all that way and it wasn't her. Mm. But this particular time it was her. And so he got us all together and he said, we are going to travel together to where it, she is mm. and we're going to bring her back together. Wow. And uh, Pastor D, what I saw of my mother, I will never forget. Mm. If you know how you see people that are walking in the marketplace yes. with the long hair, mm. matted long hair, yes. and, and close it up black, yes. like greasy, mm. that is how she was. Wow. Because for those eight years, she did not touch her hair. Wow. For those eight years, she had the same clothes. Wow. You know, now they were just greasy, you know. And we saw her. I think that's what they mean when they say the devil is a liar. <laughs> the devil is a liar. <laughs> the devil is a wow. liar. But mm. let me tell you something also. Mm that it taught me a big lesson mm. that m many times when you see somebody walking in the market mm. picking things mm. we always just say oh this person is mad yes they are mentally derailed mm. there are times when they are not how many people said my mother was mentally derailed mm. because she there are times when she told us now later on after she got saved mm. so my mother told us that that uh, there there was a, a part of her life where she she was in the marketplace mm. And she says when she was in the marketplace, people would be curious and ask her, you know, where are you from? By the way, she walked to Tanzania. Wow. That's why we couldn't find her here. She'd just mm. walk a whole day, sleep in the bush, mm. continue walking, sleep in the bush, continue mm. walking. Wow. For eight years. So I don't know, know how many years boy. it took her to, wow. to walk to Tanzania. But now when she was in Tanzania, she would, you know, like she would be at, at the marketplace, just sit with all her things, seated in a corner and and then people would look at her and her face looked okay, like she's normal. Mm. And then she would tell them, because at that time my father worked for the post office mm -hmm. and he was uh, the chief personnel officer. Mm -hmm. And so she would tell people, when you see me look like this, it is just, it's the world that has done this to me. My husband is a very big man in Nairobi. And of course they think, mm. for sure she's, she's mad. For sure. But now we this know. This has got to be madness. <laughs> this has to be madness. <laughs> I've got eight children, mm. and and uh, one of them is in university. They said for sure she's mad, mm. and she had chickens that she carried the day she left. Wow! And she kept those chickens, and the way she remembered our names is she gave each chicken one of wow. names. Can you imagine? She would give. So if she chicken. ate them, she would eat her children. <laughs> <laughs> Good thing she didn't eat me. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. Mm. So she, when we found her, she still had chickens. She always kept chickens, and it was a terrible sight. It was a terrible sight. But God is faithful. Wow. Look at that. Mm. What he told my father for the eight years. Yes. My father did not marry, remarry, mm. and during those eight years, the fellowship, the church fellowship, kept urging him to remarry oh. because they said your wife is obviously dead. Yes. If she was alive, mm. you would have known. And he says no. And you know, naturally, that's comforting. It's very comforting. You know? <laughs> yes, exactly. You know. Uh, but she's, he said no. God told me three things. And wow. one of them was that I should not remarry. Wow. And it's interesting because during this period, none of my siblings got married. But the year before, the year that she, after she came back, my elder sister got married. God had told my elder sister, mm. and she told in this house, best maid who said it at the wedding, okay. that, um, she told me that God has told me my mother will be at my wedding. Wow. And this somebody who has disappeared mm. seven years. But God has told me my mother will be at my wedding. And wow. she was. This is just a story of God's faithfulness. Amazing. Yes. Amazing. I mean, I can listen to that all day. It's just, <laughs> it's like reading the, the, that Baxter book, you know? Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, wonderful. Mm. Let's talk a little bit about your... <clears throat> I mean, I think that that story and your background relates Relate. with what your ministry has, what become. ministry has become. Yeah, so tell us a little bit about the heart and the gist of the Breaking Barriers International. Why Breaking Barriers? Why Breaking Barriers? I realized that there were invisible barriers that were in people's lives that they did not know about. I just find that... Um, in my family, every marriage is breaking. Every marriage is breaking. Mm. And every and these are born again believers and we do not know why these marriages are breaking. Mm. And people are they love the law, they're trying to serve God. So it looks like there is and it's something invisible that is affecting them mm. that is it, that they do not know about. Mm. And so uh, when I was, I wrote my first book, 
I call it breaking invisible barriers. barriers. Mm. I call it breaking invisible barriers because uh, our ministry is founded on Isaiah chapter 61, mm. verse 1, yes. where uh, we are told about Jesus Christ, yes. that he came to set the captives free. That's true. He came to break, to open prison doors mm. and to set, open the eyes, open the eyes of the blind. Mm to bind the broken hearted yes. and i mm. say i saw that the church was full of people like that mm. the lord gave me a vision one time when i was lying on my bed my eyes were closed and then i was seeing and i mm -hmm. thought how can i be seeing and my eyes are shut mm -hmm. and i was seeing pots mm -hmm. beautiful pots and it looked like whoever created the pots different sizes mm. different colors mm -hmm. whoever had created these pots took a lot of time in creating them yes. but each and every one of them had a crack or was broken mm. and i remember asking the lord why are you showing me these pots mm. and clear as day the lord told me these are my people wow broken broken pots dented dented mm. and if once a pot is got a, a cracks if you god is trying to use these pots but they'll drip out water mm. you know mm. and so our ministry uh is about our, in fact, our motto is breaking bondages mm. empowering people amen so empowering the people of god yes. because when there is something in my life that is a barrier mm. i'm not an empowered person yes but once we know what the barrier is and then we able we are able to deal with it mm. it empowers us because right. many people their problem is in is, it comes as a result of not knowing what to do even when they do know what their problem is mm. they do not know what to do about it and so we started praying with people and taking them back we call it spiritual mapping mm. taking them back to their childhood mm. and trying to see what what kind of a background did you come from mm. what did your forefathers do mm. and uh and so we do the spiritual mapping and then i came up with prayers and this was i didn't come up with them mm. truly it was the holy spirit mm. because one thing i can tell you yes. pastor desire mm. is that no one ever taught me what i teach yes i never had it from any prophet wow. and so i know that it was by revelation mm. I, this, i'm reminded of, of paul yes when he says no one taught me this that's true jesus mm. christ taught this to me by revelation mm. Mm. and so a lot of what i i teach today it was by revelation Beautiful. coming out of my own life mm. and my own background mm. and so we are we are passionate about seeing the body of christ are empowered mm. a lot of people we have a lot of testimonies mm. of people who have broken their generational curses mm. and then they've become a barren woman has become pregnant mm. in our ministry we have got many many barren women who have gotten children Wonderful. as a result of them breaking these barriers Beautiful. somebody else comes and says i've not been able to get a job mm. you know since i came out of university for seven years mm. we prayed last week we broke the curses mm. i've gotten two people that are, as, are, are asking if i can go for opportunities, opportunities. wow yeah mm. because god is a good god he's a good god. he's a good god mm. and the bible works the bible is true mm. and yet people say but the bible is saying i should walk in victory but i'm not walking in victory mm. but the bible says let god be true and every man a liar, a liar. yes, yes. Mm. so if there is something wrong it is never god that's it true. is something on my side mm. and the, then again the lord has said i've set before you life and death that's true. an open door mm. and so many of the things that we realize that people go through are because of choices mm. and these choices were made either by our forefathers or by ourselves mm. so that is the the gist of our ministry powerful, which is our passion, powerful, powerful. Our passion. Mm. that's very deeply powerful mm. uh you said about your first book. Mm -hmm. I want to ask you to give us a little synopsis on some of the books you've already published because mm -hmm. I know you're a prolific yeah. author. Mm -hmm. But before we go into that, mm -hmm. you've given us a, a few testimonies. Uh, the things that God has done in people's lives, mm -hmm. the dented ports, mm -hmm. the cracked ports, mm -hmm. and uh, the miracles that God has brought. I want to ask you a spooky question mm -hmm. that a lot of us uh, never really get to engage. Yes. The testimony is powerful, the victory is powerful, mm -hmm. but what are some of the most ridiculous things you've seen in the manifestation of delivering people? And I know as pastors, we see a lot of things, but they never get to be talked about. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe one or two, one of those where as you are praying for someone, something happened that was really, really ridiculous. Okay. <laughs> I was praying for, for a, a lady in my office. Mm -hmm. And uh, whenever we pray, we, we have somebody else. Jesus sent them two by two. Yes. So I, I often have somebody, and we call it shadowing. Yes. So they're in the room with me, and as and another reason they are there is to train them. Yes. So, we also so you mentor them we are as well as them. because they Once mentor we, through service. Exactly, through yes. service. Mm. And so this lady came, and um, 
we, uh, we went through her spiritual map uh, mapping and uh, got down you know whenever i do the spiritual mapping i'm able to identify what spirit entered through that what happened to them mm. you know they were born out of wedlock so i mm. know that the spirit of rejection is here mm. that i'm gonna deal with mm. i know the spirit of abandonment is here mm. and and stuff like that so i did all the spiritual mapping and then now it was time for and then the repentance is very very key in our ministry yes they start off with repentance the way daniel repented said mm. lord forgive us for our sins and the sins of our forefathers mm -hmm. And uh, then bringing in um, the finished work of the cross of Calvary, the blood mm. of Jesus. Then after that, we know we've dealt with all that. Then now, the interesting part mm -hmm. comes now. We, are, we start to kick out the evil spirits. Yes. This lady went on the floor, mm -hmm. got into the position of giving birth. Wow. Used one of my table mm -hmm. to rest one of her legs. Wow. Yeah. Uh -huh. And pushed as I was commanding the spirit to come out. Wow. And she pushed and pushed and pushed until eventually and it's like she's given birth it's like that demon was sitting the in her demon womb. was in her womb wow yeah and she she literally gave birth to this this spirit wow and i told the spirit go oh. in the name of jesus in the name of jesus yes and she's one on one person who her testimony is amazing after mm. she got delivered yeah yes i think that mm -hmm. Most of the people that think very low about the deliverance ministry yes. is because they've not seen some of these manifestations. Exactly. I mean, they've not had their mother away for eight years exactly. and living almost like a mad person yes. in the marketplace exactly. with her chickens, exactly. you know? Mm. But with what you are sharing, I mean, it's it's uh, beyond doubt mm. that God is at work among his people. He is. And part of the great ministries is released mm. in our generation and through the years mm -hmm. is the ministry of setting the captives free mm. through that wonderful power of deliverance. Mm. Wonderful. Talk mm. to us about your your multiple books you've written. It's a whole library. <laughs> it's uh, a whole library. Yes. Yes. Mm. When we went to the US, remember I told you now I had time in my hands. Yes. Because earlier on I was working mm. in different countries. The Lord opened opportunities for me to work. Mm. In Senegal, I was the youth director for six years. Mm -hmm. So I was very busy with the youth. But when we moved to, to California, we were there for four years. Mm -hmm. And for the first time, I found myself alone in a house. My husband has gone to work. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, Lord, what next? I yes. don't know anybody. Mm. If you give me a car, I will not know where to go. Mm -hmm. I can only stay in the house. Mm. And so hours and hours. And uh, the Lord, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and told me what I have taught you mm -hmm. over the last 20 years mm. from 1982. I want you now to put in books. Mm. Yes. And so the first book that I wrote actually was called hope for the childless mm. on on barrenness yes because i saw again how barrenness when we look at it in the bible god talked about barrenness actually as a punishment mm. we think of of of, of, of abimelech yes and how barrenness mm. was a punishment mm. when he took sarah yes true. so uh, there were three ladies when we were living in senegal mm. that were barren the three of them mm -hmm. and through the deliverance all three of them got children wow so that is the, the, I wrote a book on, mm. on their testimonies. Mm. And so that was the very first book that I wrote. And then after that, I wrote um, uh, Stand Your Ground. Stand Your Ground is a book that now I said, a lot of people don't believe in spiritual warfare. Mm. They say, no, so long as you leave the devil alone, he's going to leave you alone. Mm. And so I said, and then there is fear. Mm. And, and fear is one of the biggest de uh, uh, deterrents yes. to Christians walking in, in victory. Mm. And so I said, the Bible tells us in Hosea 4, 6 that my people perish for lack, of, lack knowledge. of knowledge. So I shouldn't feel bad that there are people who don't believe. They just don't know. Mm. Then I said, let me uh, uh, write a book which will tell Christians that you can actually stand your ground mm. against the kingdom of darkness. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. Mm. And so I wrote that and I made it. Stand your ground is actually a, it's, it's a testimony. Mm. So it's got a lot of my own life story okay. in mm. it. Mm. And then after that is when I went to uh, Breaking Invisible Barriers, okay. where now again I wanted to, to put into a book what I was going to teach. It was like a curriculum. Yes. Yes. Because mm. what I teach whenever I teach on Breaking Invisible Barriers mm. is all in that book. Wonderful. So I said there are people who will never meet me, who will never have a chance to come to my teachings. Mm. And uh, this book can be available to them because okay. because all my books are available on Amazon, mm. Amazon.com. So even people who who don't know me mm. can 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 get to to, to use the books. Mm. If I can just quickly tell you about uh, Hope for the Childless. Yes. One man wrote to me from Canada, mm -hmm. and uh, he, 
uh, he wrote to me and on, on Facebook and asked me, um, are you the author of, of Hope for the Childless? Mm -hmm. And I said, uh, yes, I am. Mm -hmm. And then he says, uh, I'd like to give you this testimony. He says, nine months ago, my wife and I, who have been married for 11 years, wow. you know, we've been looking for a child. Mm. And so I asked myself, what is there out there? Mm. You know, on Amazon. Mm. Is there anybody out there that has anything that can help us? Mm. Spiritual, because he was born again. Yes. So the Lord led him to my book. Okay. And um, when he saw Oduno, mm. he also has a relative called Oduno. Oh, wow. So when he saw that book, he was attracted to it. Mm. He said he read the book. And at the end of the book, there are seven steps on what you should do to break the, the, the curse of barrenness. Mm. So he says we just read it by faith. We went through the seven steps. Mm. And three months later, my wife was pregnant. Wow. And says our son is now nine months old. Amazing. And sent me a picture of the boy. Amazing. And that is exactly what the Lord had told me. Your books should go where you can't not go. Mm. And so I wrote that. Then I wrote um, a book on marriage. Because again, I saw how many marriages mm. are, are, are struggling also because of generational curses mm. you find in this family marriages don't last mm. marriages are always broken mm. and they do not know why they can see my aunties their marriages broke my sisters mm. and now i'm also struggling mm. so again i wrote that book on marriage mm -hmm. and then after that connected with marriage i started seeing in marriage their ungodly soul ties mm. and sometimes people are married but they are still connected spiritually mm. in a very strange and interesting way mm. to former lovers. Mm. So again, I wrote that book where somebody thinks that um, they have walked away from a relationship mm. and not only a lover. We walked away from a situation, but that situation is Satan has taken advantage of it. That's true. Exactly. Mm. And so I wrote that book on, uh, on ungodly soul ties as well. Then I saw also in the church financial struggles. Yes. Financial struggles. So I wrote again a book on uh, breaking financial curses. Mm. And uh, then uh, my latest book uh, that I wrote uh, in 2020, okay. early 2020, is Can Witchcraft Affect Christians? Mm -hmm. Can Witchcraft Affect Christians? Because mm -hmm. a lot of people were coming to me for counseling. Mm. And um, uh, many times we've thought of witchcraft as in, mm, it belongs to the village. Mm. You know, we don't need to, to, to be worried about witchcraft or, mm. or anything like that. Mm. But then when you look at the Bible, and I look at I looked at Ezekiel chapter thirteen, mm -hmm. and here we are being told about a, a, a lady that's a witch doctor, mm. and we are and God is saying, "You capture my people, mm. you are capturing my people." Mm. So I said, "You mean witchcraft can capture the mm -hmm. people of God in mm -hmm. what way?" Mm -hmm. And that is where I started researching spiritually, mm. and, and and you know something, Pastor D, mm -hmm. whenever I read the books, yes, it's like I'm hearing a voice. It's mm. like. God is just telling me what revelation. Like revelation. Mm. Yeah. The eyes of your understanding exactly. being enlightened. Being, being enlightened. Mm. And so I know that these books were not written just by me. Yes. But they are books that have got uh, a, a unique power mm. in just in themselves to set captives free. People have given us testimonies. Mm. Of, I read the book, a lady in, in America, in mm. California, she mm. told me she just bought the book up online. She read it. She records after chapter one, she was on her knees repenting. By chapter two, she was manifesting. Wow. You see, she was manifesting. Mm. So when I went to California, she looked for me and wanted me to, and I, we, we met mm. together. And she mm. told me that her family has been revolutionized wow. because of that. Amazing. So I give all the glory to God. Amen. Because sometimes I read the book myself and I say, who wrote this book? This is not even how I talk. Mm. This is not even my language. You see, mm. so I know that it's God that wrote the book. Amazing. For, his, for the body of God. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I listen to myself preaching. Yes. And I'm like, no, that, 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 that I've never mean. even heard that before. <laughs> <laughs> I want to show these books to the camera mm -hmm. so that whoever is looking at them can see at least the cover mm -hmm. page mm -hmm. and the title. Mm -hmm. The first one I see here is in French. So you have some of them translated into other nations, uh, other languages. Could yes. you talk to us about that? Yes. When I went to teach in Burkina Faso in West Africa in 2013, one of the men who was there wrote to me I bus, uh, two years later, mm -hmm. like 2015, yes. and told me, I know you don't know me, and but you came to our country in Burkina Faso, and you taught, and the ministry impacted my life. And I would like to to translate your books into French for free. Wow! And Amazing. so that is how it was. So we, we have translated three books into French. Mm. Uh, Breaking Invisible Barriers is in French as well. Mm -hmm. We've got Stand Your Ground is also in French. Wonderful. And uh, right and uh, 
ungodly soul ties is also in friend so get in touch this is breaking invisible <laughs> barriers this is what standing your ground looks like mm -hmm. uh when two halves make a whole this is the marriage can witchcraft affect christians that's what it looks like i strongly recommend that you get this in your hands in your house talk to us about you and uh your husband i mean it's a whole if we go that way it's a whole another interview set by tell itself us, but tell us a little just bit a little bit yes Yes, my husband Daniel Oleshani uh, works for an organization that I actually cannot mention on yes. the screen. Yeah, Dan, um, you can see a smile coming to my face. Of huh? course, of course. <laughs> <laughs> we got married uh, very, very young. In fact, he was 24 oh. when we got married. Mm. And um, a 24 year old, he's a 24 year old. Yes. So, marriage in the beginning was rough. Mm. Each one, you know, is still wanting to, you know. He beat me by two because I got married at 26. Oh, you got married at 26. <laughs> okay, okay. Mm. Yeah, and one thing, another thing people do not know is that I'm older than my husband. Oh, wow. By nine months. Oh, wow. When he got married, he was 24, I was 25. Oh, wow. Yeah, but when you see us together, yes. he's at 24. That He's really uh -huh. blessed. <laughs> <laughs> wonderful yes you've done well so what what uh, helped us a lot was talking through things in the beginning he was not the kind of person that wanted to talk through things mm. but we constantly talked through things and uh, when i was not happy about something i made it clear mm. that i was not happy about it mm -hmm. and so we would um quarrel um one thing again i'm going to say my husband has never laid a hand on me Bless God. Yes, amen. We learned to, without any physical alt altercations, we learned to, Lord. yeah, mm. to, to, to just talk through things. Mm. So it wasn't easy being a, a mother of three because my children came very close together. Mm. Some people used to say you've got triplets. Mm. And so uh, my children came very, very close together. Uh, the challenge was that my husband had a traveling job. Mm. And he's always had a traveling job, mm. even up to today. Mm. And so uh, that had its own challenges but we try to make up whenever he was around. Yes. So although uh, my children, their dad was away a lot, mm. when he was home, mm. he was home. Yes. He gave them all his attention. Full attention. A full attention. And because mm. we knew that this was a challenge, mm. we worked around it by doing things together as a family. Mm. And then, of course, we, were, we lived in different countries. We left Kenya in 1993. Okay. And we were away for 23 years. Wow. We just came back in 2016. Wow. So our children also grew up, you know, mm. as, as third culture kids. And mm. that is not easy at all. Mm. And uh, that has been a challenge to date but mm. god there is no challenge that we cannot Beyond face uh, yeah yes. there in god's hands mm. and so um just each one of us working on our own relationship with mm. god mm. and and knowing that what i'm doing mm. i'm a accountable to god mm. he's not accountable to me yes it's mm. to god yes because when he's away mm. i don't see him yes but if he's accountable to god yes. he knows wherever he is He's there with God. That's he right. knows where I have stayed. Yes. I am here with God. Mm. So that is what has, has really helped us. Wonderful. And uh, we've done a lot of traveling together. Mm. And right now is a wonderful time because now his ministry, they mm. invite me to teach them. Oh, wow. So we went to Russia mm. together. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, 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 I went to Russia together. We went That's to, pretty recent. It is pretty recent. Mm. It was. Um, uh, last year, you know, it was just okay. a blur. Yes. 2020. 2020. It's like mm. every, it was wrapped up everybody's calendar. Yes. So we went in 2019. Okay. Mm. And then I also went to India with him okay. to teach. And then I went back alone yes. to India. Mm. And then more recent was February last year mm. when we went together to the Comoro Islands. Wow. All those was on account of his ministry. Wow. But them mm. calling me to teach them on breaking invisible barriers. What a gift. Mm. You've told us many, many, many things and I'm just loving listening to you. Mm -hmm. I think we can talk until the cow come home mm -hmm. but let me hear before you give us your parting shot mm -hmm. i mean 38 years married many years in the ministry mm. if you had a chance to start again mm -hmm. what is the one thing you would do differently you know people have asked me that question and uh i've all honestly from the bottom of my heart mm. i've said there is nothing i would do different yes and why am i saying that because this is, is it's, it's owned by God. Yes. 
and even even the failures mm. are orchestrated by God. They're part of the journey. They're part of the journey mm. to build muscle. Yes. I'm reminded of when uh, God told the Israelites that I'm mm. not going to allow mm. the Philistines. Mm. I want you to, I want them to stay because I want to teach you what they are. Mm. You're gonna continue fighting. And not let your brother shorter route. Yes, mm. yes. And and th- no, I'm talking about the ones who did not fight during that 40 years in the desert. Oh yes. So mm. let's go God oh, tell yeah. Joshua. Oh yeah. Yes, mm. that I will these ones do not know warfare they mm. were born during that time yes. so i'm going to leave the philistines there mm. to teach them how to fight because yes. they don't know mm. they don't mm. know how to fight mm. and so i see that god orchestrates everything that happens in our lives and when you look back at it you see that that is what grew me mm. you know mm. because when i started the ministry you know i was i was young mm. and uh, and i just what helped me was that I felt inadequate, like I was saying. Yes. So mm. I was constantly telling God, I don't know what to do. Mm. I don't know what to do, help me. Mm. I don't know what to do, help me. Mm. And now when I look back, I see that that is exactly what he did. He helped. Like, uh, yeah, he helped. Mm. Yeah, he helped. We are told that a righteous man will fall seven times. And the Lord will deliver him. He will rise all. again. Yes. He will rise again. Mm. So who, who orchestrates those fallings? Mm. They will fall seven times because... Each time you fall, you're wiser. Mm. Each time you fall, you 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 learn something more. Mm. And I always say makes that, me think of how mm-hmm. the scripture says that even that which was intended for evil, for evil, God has turned around, it out for good. Yes, around for good. Mm. Yes, turned it around for good. So to be very honest, there is really nothing that I would mm. say that I would uh, mm. do differently. Mm. I would just probably hold on to God harder. Yes, mm. listen to Him more. Mm. Just just. Just not move ahead until I mm. hear that this is the way walk down. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Mm-hmm. Wonderful. What about the younger ministers mm-hmm. who are starting out when you started out mm. in their early twenties, mm-hmm. early thirties? Mm. What would be your what would be your what would be your package for them? My package for them would be that many times we are impatient. Mm. You want to, to start a ministry today. Mm. And by next week, you're international. You're international. <laughs> <laughs> it's big, you know. Uh, I, I, when I first, when I first started teaching, uh, when we, I, was, I came back now to Kenya. Uh, I was just teaching in homes. Uh, I was teaching small groups. Uh, people would just invite me, uh-huh. and I would go to their home, uh-huh. and I found they've invited 15 people. Uh-huh. They've invited 20 people, uh-huh. and uh, and so we started small. And that it, all I did was I said, Lord. I know my calling. Yes. And I'm going to just pursue it and I will leave the, the how many people and where they're going to you. Mm. When I eventually was teaching the 6,000, mm. it didn't mean anything to me. That's true. Because I've learned to teach small groups and That's big true. groups. That's true. You see. Mm. And so people are discouraged, younger uh, ministers. Mm. They are discouraged because they're thinking they're not growing fast enough. Mm. They're not growing fast enough. Mm. So they must know that the growth is in God's hands and not in their own hands. That's true. Yes. I mean, it delivers you from the tid- tediousness of the journey. Exactly. When you know God is in charge. Exactly. You are his steward. Exactly. And you move when he says move. move. when he says move. Wonderful. Yeah. Thank you so much, Pastor Nelly, for mm-hmm. downloading heavily mm-hmm. uh, on our platform here, the Beacon Encourage. I want you to look in the camera there and three things you're going to do. Number one, give us your parting shot. Number two, take a moment and encourage, release a word of encouragement because this is the Beacon Encourage. As you feel it on your heart, for someone there sick, someone tired, mm. someone worried, feeling like they want to give up uh, and uh, release that word that uh, would make a difference for them uh, in their life right now. Mm. And then finally, after that, take a moment and pray for all those that are watching and anyone else who may get to watch this whenever they do uh, and release the blessing of God. Thank you very much, Pastor Desire. And uh, you asked me what would be my parting shot. One, uh, what I would say is that a ministry is as strong as the personal relationship that the leader has with God. And so one of the things that I've always uh, done is to make sure that my relationship with God is not compromised by ministry, is not compromised by teachings, is not compromised by anything. So that um, I have a verse, and it is my life verse. It is Psalm chapter 27 and verse 4. And it says, one thing I ask of the Lord, This is what I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life and um, to dwell there, to know him, to know that he's my father, to know that at the end of the day, 
it's not the ministry, it's my relationship with God. To know that at the end of the day, God has sent me here with a purpose, according to uh, we see in, in Psalm 139, when we are told that each one of us has a book of destiny. And he says that our book of destiny was written before one of our days even came to be. So the most important thing in our lives is to accomplish our purpose. So even for me, the most important thing for me is not really breaking barriers international. I ask myself, like Paul, at the end of my days, will I be able to say that I have accomplished the purpose for which God um, sent me to this earth? So what is a word of encouragement that I would have? A lot of, of Christians do look at their lives and they see their failures. I look at myself and I see I lie a lot. I'm going to be very open here. I'm still struggling with lying. Why is it that I struggle with lying? That means I'm not a Christian. What, what is this? And so I'm not, I'm not a righteous person. I want to talk about righteousness. I'm not a righteous person. I want us to know that every believer, if you have accepted Jesus Christ into your life as your Lord and Savior, God sees you as righteous. But personally, what about if I'm struggling with lying? You're a righteous person that is struggling with lying. What about if I'm still struggling with sexual immorality? You're a righteous person that is struggling with sexual immorality. I always give this, um, this example of Prince Charles. We tell, if you find Prince Charles in a dirty hole, dirty clothes, you still call him Prince Charles. And that is how we are. When I go and I call him Prince Charles, what will I tell Prince Charles? I'll say, Prince Charles, what are you doing in the mud? You're not supposed to be in the mud. You're supposed to be sitting, you know, in the palace at the table. So for all of us, telling a person you are unrighteous, you are a sinner, is not what causes them to change. When we tell people you're a righteous person, and a righteous person should not be living the way you're living. A righteous person is clean. A righteous person is royal. Why are you wearing dirty clothes? You are righteous. And so that is what I would, would do to encourage people. Know who you are. The Bible is a mirror. When I look at the Bible, I see who I am. It's not the world that tells me who I am. It's the word of God. When I look at the word of God, I see myself. And so let me encourage each and every believer to know that you're a righteous person. So when you're struggling with sin, tell yourself, surely a righteous person should not be living like this. And so that is uh, an encouragement that I have for you today. You are righteous. And do Amen. not let anyone convince you of anything less than that. Uh, you are righteous and live like a righteous person. Uh, you are holy, so live like a holy person. Uh, Father, in the name of Jesus, I just want to thank you for every single person that is listening to me today and has watched uh, this uh, Beacon and Courage today. I thank you, dear Lord, that you do not treat us as our sins deserve. You do not treat us according to our iniquities, but you remember how we are formed. You remember that we are dust. And you have told us that as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is your love for us. Uh, thank you for that love. Thank you, Jesus. You said that even as a father has compassion on his children, uh, so you are father, you have compassion on us. Uh, we thank you for your compassion. We thank you for your love. We thank you for the wonderful plan uh, that you have for each and every one of us. It is a plan for welfare uh, and not for evil. It gives us a future and a hope. Uh, I want to bless Father every family, uh, everyone that is, is representing a family, Father, bless them, bless their children, bless their work, bless them in their health, Jehovah God. Uh, I want to thank you and bless you. And I ask all this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Pastor Nelly. What a word, what a moment, what an interview. Yes. I know that it's going to be a blessing to so many uh, out there. If you watch this, please leave us a comment. Let us know how it is blessing you and impacting you. We will be most delighted as well if you can subscribe to the channel, find us on Facebook, find us on Twitter, uh, and on this YouTube channel. We are absolutely delighted. The Lord strengthen you, empower you, and receive the blessing as the woman of God has prayed. Amen. This is the Beacon Encourage. We love you. See you next week. God bless you. <laughs>